how much you love them. God, on this day, on this amazing day, on this gracious day, on this forgiveness day, on the day that you have made, on this day, God, We thank you. We honor you. We worship you. With all that is within us, we do and say, through the powerful holy name of Jesus, amen and amen. Let's give God a hand this morning, amen. You be seated. Praise the Lord. You know, you're not alone when trouble comes. You're not alone when things happen. You might find it unfamiliar or you might even say it's unfamiliar territory for you. But I want you to know something. You're not alone. You're not alone. That's what family's all about. You're not alone. God is here for you and with you. You know... One of the greatest things I love about this church is the fact that I feel in my spirit that there's a freedom here. And sometimes, I'll tell you, sometimes because of the heaviness, because of the immaturity that we don't know how to get rid of the heaviness, we bring it with us. And when we do, sometimes we just don't even know how to shake it off. I know I've been in places in my life where you just feel, let's just call it what it is. We call it the funk. You ever heard of the, the, the funk? Come on, somebody. You know, you just get that, that funk over you that you just feel like you can't, you don't even want to get out of bed, so to speak. You know, it feels like nothing you can say is right, nothing you can do is right. But you know what? Let me tell you something. As much as the enemy loves this time of the year, come on, somebody. God loves us more. God loves us more. And we're going to redeem the time, allow God to be God, and let God just, I want to celebrate the goodness of God, the graces of God. He's an amazing God. He loves us so much. Thank you, Father, for loving me. Thank you, God, for dying for me. Thank you, God, when I was walking through my stupidity, even in times of still walking through my stupidity, God always shows up. Amen? I'm going to get into the Word just a moment. I just want to make a quick announcement. Uh, Some of you know, over the years, I I used to teach for Tommy Tenney and uh, uh, taught in his intern program. And and Tommy is a world-renowned speaker, speaker, he wrote the book, God Chasers. He also, um, the movie, uh, One Night with the King. I don't know if anybody's seen the movie, One Night with the King. It's a great movie. He wrote that and directed that. Uh, Tommy is really a jewel. He's been through a lot over the years. And uh, he's now, his, most of his ministry takes him overseas. He's doing a lot of stuff for Joel Osteen. He's doing a lot of stuff traveling all over the globe. He's gone a lot. Uh, make a long story short, Tommy had a cancellation uh, and going overseas, and he called, and we were traveling to go see my dad this week, and he actually has an availability next weekend, and so he asked, would we be available, would we want him to come, and so I said, you know, Tommy, let, I told, I actually talked to his wife, I said, look, let's, we're going to pray about it, we're going to just, just seek God over it, so I called a few leaders in the church, and we prayed over it for several hours, and called back and said, we want you to come, and so he's going to come and be with us next Sunday at 1045. He won't be for the first service. He'll be for the second service, 1045. Uh, so if you still want to come to the first service, you can. Uh, but he will be here for the second service. L- let me just see a show of hands. Who does not know who Tommy Tenney is? Well, that's a lot of people don't know who he is. Wow. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. I kind of, I guess, me and I knew who he was. He's, he's from Alexandria. Tommy is a world-renowned speaker. I mean, for those who don't know, he's... He, to have him come, I'm just telling you, it's, it's a jewel to have him come. Uh, it, to, to, he, he travels in huge circles. I mean, he, he travels the globe. And I had the privilege, me and several other pastors, to, to teach in his intern class. So I got to know him, him and his wife over the years. And so him to have an availability, just say, look, call us on the phone and say, look, I can come. It's a big deal. And so we prayed about it, and we really feel good about it. So he's going to be here next Sunday. I'm, I'm telling you, don't miss it. Don't miss it. Because it, we'll probably advertise it. I'll probably get Ryan to do some stuff on the radio. We'll probably do some advertising just to kind of promote that he's going to be here. Uh, so get here early. Bring your friends. Bring your enemies and all that good stuff. Even, I hope I can get his wife to sing. Uh, if you ever heard her sing, she will blow your socks off. So I hope she comes and sings with us. 
So anyway, uh, be ready for that next Sunday. Invite your friends. I encourage you to please be here and come. You, uh, you won't want to miss it. I, I'm just telling you now. You won't want to miss it. He'll probably, he's in wrote 10 books, 15. I don't know how many books he's written. I mean, he's written a lot of books. So he's got a lot, a lot of books out there. Amen. You want to say something or you want to just, yeah. okay. He travels. Other places and whatever. And when I walked in a minute ago, right before your announcement, she told me that. You know, not only is this man incredible in, in, in the book God Chasers, I encourage you. If you've never read it, you need to read it. Um, and then reread it and reread it because it talks about if we're giving people stale manners, they're going to starve to death. Yeah. That's right. We are not feeding at a Jesus abundant spirit. So I just wanted to tell you, I find it so amazing. I was not one of the leaders who called to pray about Tommy Kenny. I find it so amazing that God really does know the desire of our heart. Amen. He was, he's supposed to be overseas, but he's, he's here now. And that to me, I mean, you guys don't understand. That's so amazing to me. Praise the Lord. That's good. Thank but you for sharing God that. He didn't do that just for me. He did it, and he might have done it just for me. But, <laughs> but you guys all need to show up Sunday because Amen. you would be so amazingly blessed by the Holy Spirit that is in this man to pour It would challenge you. And uh, I'm not sure how much we're willing to die. Me personally, <laughs> and as a church, you know? Amen. So be ready, be ready, be ready, be ready. Yes. And thank you, God. I told her, you're not going to get to see him until he does in public church and he preaches over people. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, I am, and so are y'all. And you're going to be very blessed. God is faithful, amen? amen. So I encourage you to be here for that, amen? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time together. God, I thank you that your word is relevant. God, I thank you that your word is, word is so timely. And God, I thank you that, God, whatever we stand in need of, just as Trish cried out to God, she needed something. And God, you always show up. You never deny yourself. You always is so real in our lives, our homes. And whatever we need, God, you're a God that provides all those things. So we thank you. We honor you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. I want to kind of just stay in the same vein as we talked about um, last week and maybe go a little deeper with the end of that message. If you wasn't here last week, I'll kind of highlight what I'm speaking of. Last week, I was talking about the fear of the Lord. And I was trying to un get you to understand that there is a good fear and a bad fear. And the good fear is the fear of the Lord, the respect who he is, the reverence of, you know, don't worry about what man can do to you, worry about what God can do to you. Amen. Having a respect to who God is and understanding that he's all powerful, all omnipotent. He's, a, he's, a, he's an amazing, powerful God. And when you begin to fear the Lord in a respectful way, in the right way, the Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Amen. Now, we need wisdom. Amen? Amen? Now, if you're here today and you have children, you need wisdom. Amen? Amen. Amen? You think about how even yourself, when you were younger and your parents tried to say things to you, and you thought you knew what was right and what was wrong... 
and you found out later how smart your mom and daddy was, come on, somebody, you realize that they had some wisdom. And so when we begin to understand that God wants us as believers in the body of Christ, we need wisdom. The scripture says that wisdom is the principal thing. In all that I get, get understanding. Now, wisdom can be defined many ways. One of the ways is it's refined or defined as pounding it in, so to speak. When you read Proverbs, you realize every time you read a chapter in Proverbs, you wonder, why did he say that the last time? He's saying it again a different way. Because he wants you to get it. He says it over and over again so you finally get it. And so even in our Christian life, I know for myself, and I'm speaking to me right now, over the years, there's things that all of a sudden I wake up and I finally go, oh, okay, I get it. Now, sometimes I get frustrated because I want other people to get it when I realize that maybe I got it, but you know what? It took me maybe 15 years to get it. I shouldn't expect you to have it in five minutes. But God wants us to have it. He wants us to understand this wisdom that he speaks about. Now, one of the things that I understand when he says wisdom is the principal thing, one of the things that I saw in the scripture was when he was trying to convey to us who he is. And one of the things he said to us, he said, he said, listen, they're arguing. You, you have the mother of Zebedee, she's arguing about her kids and want to know who's going to sit at the right hand, who's going to sit at the left hand. And the reason they're arguing about this is because even though they were in his presence, they didn't get it. They were still thinking that his kingdom was all about like the kingdom of David, like raising up some kind of kingdom like, like, a, like a man's kingdom. And they didn't understand that the kingdom he had was bigger than that. Now, we don't understand sometimes that it's bigger than that. Sometimes we lose sight of that. But he's trying to tell us in the scripture, and he says very plainly, as they argued, he says to them, he says, listen. Basically, I'm, I'm summarizing. He's saying, you don't get this, but let me explain this to you. He said, I came to serve, not to be served. Now, in the natural mind, that's not easy to comprehend. Let's just be real. It's not easy to comprehend. Now, this past Wednesday, if you weren't here Wednesday night, I asked a question. I said, when I say the word servant, what does that speak to you? What do, what do you think that means to you? When I use the word servant, what is the first thing you think about? And I had all over this room different definitions. One of them said, when I think the word servant, I think of slave. When I think of the word servant, I think of, of a maid, a butler. When I think of the word servant, I think of something that's beneath me. Now, I love this church. You know why? Because when we're honest about things, we can get it. And we were honest about it. Instead of trying to come up with some kind of, you know, highfalutin, scholarful definition. Do I see scholarful? That's a good word, amen? That's a Cajun dictionary, amen? We just flat said we don't get it. And when we do that, and when we understand those are areas in our life that we just don't get. That makes us in a position to get it. Are you, you follow me? Because if you think you got it and you don't have it, then you never get it. Now, some of you says, Pastor, that was an oxymoron. I remember going sitting down with my pastor, and my pastor would show me the scripture, and I was early on in my, 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 my walk with the Lord, and he would show me a scripture, and he would be smiling from ear to ear, and he's going, man, I'll read the scripture. And man, the Lord spoke to me, and, and he's this, and I'm going, yeah, yeah. And I'm, I'm going, yeah, I get it. Yeah, inside I'm going, I don't get it. <laughs> don't even know what you're talking about. Amen. But he's trying to teach us something, and he wants us to get this, and he's trying to get us to understand the importance of being a servant. Now, Pastor, are you preaching this message because you need people working in the children's church? Amen. Pastor, are you preaching this message because you need somebody to cut the grass? Amen. Let me say something to you. Yeah. There you go, Jim. Amen. If you don't want to, you don't have to. But you're going to miss a blessing. Amen. Because, see, I'm going to talk about this in a moment. Because what I want to really convey this morning is simply this. I want you to understand that there are benefits and being a servant. There are benefits in, in serving in the kingdom of God. There are benefits far beyond our own imagination. There are so many benefits. 
that we don't get it. Because, see, if you don't see the value in the benefits, you don't do it. Hello. You see, some of us are old enough to remember when we were younger, when somebody would offer you a job, you were more important about the hourly wage than it was about the benefits. Hello, somebody. But pretty soon, when you get a little older, you realize, man, listen, I take a few dollars less an hour to get better benefits. Because when you're walking through things and you need those benefits and they're not there. Look, Judy and I walked through that seven years ago. I had Christian MediShare, which I'm promoting right now, telling you not to get it. (laughs) Do not say it from the from the hilltop. Do not get Christian MediShare. They should take Christian off their name. I'm just, I'm, I'm telling you up front. We had them for years, paid big dollars for them, and then when we needed them, and one statement my wife made, because she said that 25 years ago she had a kidney infection, they said it was pre-existing and denied us. After we fought it, I mean, I fought it. I'm telling you, intellectually, we got on the Internet. We did everything to, make, to fight it and come to find out there was not even an insurance. They were a ministry. And because they were a ministry, they rolled under the radar, didn't have to to do what insurance qualifications are. And they denied us. Now, why are you telling me that, Pastor? Because it was a benefit that we needed. And we didn't get. But let me tell you something. Here's where I'm going with this. Sometimes we look for the benefits of man when we should be looking for the benefits of God. See, I was putting my trust in the benefits of this insurance in which I needed and I wish I'd have had. And still today, I wish I'd have had. But guess what? God showed up. And God says, listen, because you're my servant, I'm going to show you bigger benefits. And so during that whole process, we found out the benefits of God. I mean, things begin to happen. I mean, I remember when we were trying to get into LSU, and they were telling us that it would take months to get into LSU if you were lucky, and that, you know, blah, 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 you know, and all these kind of things were taking place. And all of a sudden, a friend of mine called me on the phone, and him and I have been friends for a long time, and he called me on the phone. He said, what's going on? I said, my wife is going through this. We just found out she's on dialysis. She's got to have a kidney transplant. He said, can I come visit you? And I said, sure. So him and his wife drove up. We're sitting by our pool behind the house. And all he says, well, what seems to be the problem? And I said, I said, well, my wife needs a kidney transplant, and because of our insurance, da, da, da. And I I said, we need to try to get into LSU, and LSU is not allowing us to get into LSU because it's a big, long waiting list. He says, huh, I got a friend of mine I went to college with who's on the board at LSU. Let me call him. Poof. Come on, somebody. That's not an accident with God. Calls him on the phone, and a guy calls me on the phone and says, can you be here on Monday or Tuesday? Let me tell you something. That's the benefits of God. Understanding who you serve it really is. He came to serve us, too, as we serve him. Come on, somebody. All of a sudden, we go into this thing. This, this process is taking place. I mean, all these things are happening. I, I mean, amazing things are happening. And we go over there, and all of a sudden, I, I'm waiting for my wife, and she's upstairs, and we're going through these tests. And all of a sudden, this lady walks up to me, and she starts talking to me, and I'm talking to her. And she's, she's been with the LSU for a long time. And I said, well, what do you do for LSU? And she says, oh, she says, I'm in charge of all the finance in an LSU. I said, well, you're probably the person I need to talk to. She says, bring me this and this and this, and I'll see what I can do for you. About a week later, we had to go back. I called on the phone. and said, I'm coming up. I brought her what I needed. Now, I'm not exaggerating when I tell you this. My, my same friend who had a little airplane picked us up because Judy was sick, picked us up here to LSU uh, at the airport here, flew us over there. We get over there. Judy goes upstairs to run the test. I take the paperwork to this lady, walk into her room. She's smiling at me the whole time, and she's talking to me while she's typing. She's not even looking at what I just gave her. And she's typing at me like this, and she goes, oh, listen, I got you cleared for a year. It won't cost you nothing. Come on, somebody. Listen, that's benefits of God. Now, I'm telling you these things because I'm trying to get you to understand. Sometimes we put our, 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 our trust in the wrong benefits. But when we serve the kingdom of God, God's got bigger benefits than these things. Pastor, what are some of the benefits? What are some of the benefits of being a servant of the kingdom of God. I'm glad you asked. He says over there, he's teaching, he's preaching, he's teaching. And all of a sudden, here we find in Matthew 4, and he's all of a sudden, now he's in the desert, he's fasting, he's praying, Satan is tempting him in all these areas of his life. Next thing you know, now he's already stepped into his ministry. Next thing you know, he calls his first disciple. Next thing you know, he's preaching his first message, and he's standing on the, on the mountain, and he's preaching the Beatitudes. 
And he's talking about blessing. Now, beatitude is just a simple, probably a better way of saying supreme blessings. And so he's preaching about supreme blessings. And one of the supreme blessings he says, he said, blessed is the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Now, meek, inherit the earth? Pastor, that just don't seem right. Being meek is being obedient to be a servant of the kingdom of God when you don't see how you're going to do it. Being meek is saying, God, I don't understand this, but God, you said it. And that's just settled with me. God, you said the meek is going to... God, that's not, that's not in the dictionary for, for how, to, how to be successful in business. I, I didn't get that in business school. I didn't get that when I graduated with isometrics. I didn't get into that. God is trying to teach us something amazing. He's trying to show us something amazing. Understanding the benefits of the kingdom of God. This is what he says over in Psalms. He talks about the benefits here. Psalms 103, he says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, in all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And by the way, forget not all his benefits. Forget not all his benefits. Listen, forget not. He goes on and talks about who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercy, who satisfies your mouth with good things. So that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Like the, I, I love to talk about the, weas, the, 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 the wings of an eagle. Amen? Amen. The renewing. The, and forget not his benefits. See, we should not forget the benefits of God. Yeah. Understanding that God has many great things for us. Now, one of the greatest benefits we find here is, first of all, God's benefits through serving him always, without a doubt, brings blessings. God's benefits always leads to blessings. God wants us to walk in his blessings. Listen, when Abraham said, I'm going to leave my local Walmart, when Abraham said, I'm going to leave my local garage, when Abraham said, I'm going to leave the place where I get my burgers, when Abraham said, I'm going to leave the doctor that I know, I'm going to leave the country that I know, all of a sudden God shows up and says, I'm going to bless you. Why? Because he walked in the obedience. And then also when he realized that he was walking in the blessings of God, he said, listen, I'm blessed to be a blessing. Yeah. See, understanding that blessings are not just for us alone. Hello, somebody. Yeah. Blessings should pour out of us onto others around us. Yeah. You want to see other people get blessed? I do. Yeah. I love to see other people blessed. Do I like to be blessed myself? Yes, I like to be blessed myself. But do I love to see the blessings of God just ooze out all over everybody else? Yeah. Brother, I do. Understanding the benefits of God, he wants us to walk in these blessings. Scriptures all over the place. Let's look at a few of them here. Psalms 128. It talks about the blessings that, that those who fear the Lord. It says, blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in his ways. He goes on to say, uh, uh, Proverbs 10.6. Blessing are the head of the righteous. That's pretty good, isn't it? Proverbs 28.20. 20, a faithful man will abound with blessings. Isn't that good? Listen, when we're faithful to things of God, God wants to bless us. Now, I will tell you, I grew up in a denomination that just really finding favor and blessings was just not in their, their vocabulary because they didn't want us to get prideful. Hello, somebody. Now, I'm not being prideful. I'm just being honest. You see, there's a difference between being cocky and confident in who you are in Christ, being confident in the fact that God said it, so I believe it. Instead of being cocky about it, I'm confident about it. I'm confident to know that God said it, and that settles it with me. I'm confident to know that God says, listen, Bobby, if you do this, I'm going to do this. The blessings that follow in the things of God. Here are the next thing. One of the things we find as we are walking the godly servant, as we begin to be servants of the kingdom of God, it allows us to enter into his presence. Because, see, a servant can go into the presence of the master anytime he wants. Come on, somebody. Because he's welcome. A servant is welcome always into the presence of the master. Even the scripture talks about over in, in Chronicles, it says in 30, a part of the scripture, that enter his sanctuary, which he has sanctified forever, and serve the Lord your God. Because, see, when we enter in his presence, we're serving him because, see, he created us to worship him. He created us to, to, to talk about how good he is. Can I tell you something? You want God to show up in your life? Start bragging about him. 
Start bragging about him. Start bragging about how great God is. And God's going, hey, oh, man, i got to show up. Ooh. They like me. Listen, as a parent, as a, as a parent of, of, of three sons and seven grandbabies, you want to get on my good side? You brag about my kids. You brag about my grandkids. Brother, I will jump over the moon to get to you. Why? Because they're mine. And I listen, it's just like I'm a kid of the most high God. When I brag on my father, my father's going, come on, boy. <laughs> you think that's good? I got something better for you. Why? Because when you walk in the obedience of God and the blessings begin to fall in your lap, listen, God wants good things for you. Here's a problem. You feel like you don't deserve them. You feel like they're, that you're unworthy of them. Here's the problem. If you think that away, then you're in your own righteousness. Because in your righteousness, you're not. In your righteousness, you're filthy. Your righteousness is like filthy rags. But see, I'm not in my righteousness anymore. I'm in the righteousness of my father. Listen, I want you to know something. You know what kind of blood pumps through these veins? JC positive. Come on. On my daddy's side? Come on, somebody. I'm JC positive on my daddy's side. There you go. Because, see, I allow, I allow the blood of Christ to roll through these veins. I want to be a kid of the Most High God, understanding that we can enter into his presence anytime we want. That's a good thing. Amen? Yes. Here's the next thing. Is this. Serving God. <laughs> now, this is a good one because some of you need this one. Serving God gives us a new name. It gives us a new name. Guess what? <laughs> I'm not the same old person I used to be. The Bible talks about how we're, we're new creatures in Christ. We're, we have a new name. Let's look at some scripture which it says here. Uh, Isaiah talks about it. Uh, 62, jump down a little bit. I think in the latter part of the first two. It says, you shall be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord will name. I love that. Because God himself is going to call you a new name. Amen? Listen, I'm glad I'm not on my old name anymore. My old name is not very popular. Come on, somebody. What do you mean by that? I told you stories how I go down. I just went to visit my father this week, and I ain't got a chance to see him in, in several weeks, and so it was good to go down home to see him. And, and I'm always wondering when I walk into a Walmart or walk into a store if I'm not going to run across somebody that I used to know, you know. And it's so funny because Julie and I laugh about it, and, and I've said this before from the pulpit because it's kind of funny, but you see people you had not seen in a long time, and they come up to you, and they're going, Hey, Bobby, I'm the blankety-blank, are you, old blankety-blank? And you tell them, What are you doing these days? Oh, I'm pastoring. Oh, you don't say. You know, they get that little look. <laughs> Why? Because they know you by your old name. They know they owed you. But see, guess what? I'm not the old me anymore. See, when we, when, we, when we fall on our face and begin to serve the king of kings, he's going, I'm going to call you something different. See, we talked about Abraham. Abram was, when he began, he was Abram. Then he became Abraham. He says, listen, you're not no longer going to be known by Abram. You're going to be called Abraham. And that word Ham there was the closest they can get to actually give a definition to the breath of God. Listen, understanding that when God breathed upon him, listen, he was April, breath of God. Come on, somebody. April, breath of God. April, hum, the breath of God. Listen, I'm Bobby Joe, the breath of God. Come on, somebody. <laughs> That's a Cajun term for it, amen? The breath of God. We're not the same anymore. There was a guy by the name of Jacob who was known as Surplanter Trickster. When he wrestled with God, he says, you're not going to be longer called Jacob anymore. We're going to call you something new. We're going to give you a new name. See, when we become a servant of the Most High God, He wants to name us different. He don't want us to go by the old name. Because, see, even Jacob was called tricksters and plants or planter. And he had to say, what is your name? And he had to really repent. He said, I'm a trickster. I'm a surplanter. No longer will you be a surplanter. No longer will you be a trickster. Your name won't no longer be that anymore. It's going to be a new name. God wants to name us something new. Thank God for the freshness of a new name. Some of us today need a new name. Amen? We need to serve God under our new name. Here's the next thing. Great benefit serving Christ is he always, always, God gives us an example to follow. Isn't that wonderful? He's an example for us. John talks about it in 13. He says in 13, 12. So when he washed their feet, washed their feet, 
taking his garment and sat down again and, sat, and he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? He's asking them a question. And basically what he's just done to him, he messed him up. Come on. You know, whenever you get God, when, when you allow God in your life, he will mess you up. He will mess you up, man. I'm telling you why. Because in your own intellect, you've got this, this comprehension of what you think things are all about. And all of a sudden, God will just mess you up. Why? Because his thinking is, his ways are not our ways. Come on. we got our stinking thinking. Amen. But he says here, he says, I messed you up when I did this to you. Basically, he said, do you know what I've done to you? You call me teacher and Lord and you say, well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, by the way, you also, you also ought to wash one another's feet. Now, this is Christ talking here. This is, this is the king of kings who took some dirty, stinking feet. Listen, these guys walk with no shoes on. These guys walk with sandals, and I'm sure they had some, some toe cheese about that thick between their toes. Come on, somebody. I'm trying to get you to see this wasn't no clean feet. Amen? He washed their feet. He says, for I have given you an example that you should do all, do also as I've done to you. Oh, pastor. Who? 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 I don't want to do that. Who? Who? <laughs> get over it, man. Christ gave us an example. If you know these things, blessed are you who you do them. Peter talks about it. In 2.21, it says, For to this you were called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. Now, let me say this this morning, and, and don't shout me down when I, when I do this or say this. And I've said this before, but I really feel like I've got to really bring this thing across. Understanding, as, as we, 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 we're servants of the Most High God, and to follow such a great example of who he is. As a parent, quit telling your kids what to do and show them how to do it. You see, we can talk all day long and say, oh, don't do as I do. Do as I say do. Now, let me say it this way, and I'm trying to be very nice. That's one of the most asinine things you can say. Because kids are going to follow your lead. They're going to do what you do. Now, by no means am I perfect, by none. No shape, fashion, form. You don't say amen too loud. Amen? But you know what? I want my kids to follow my example because Paul said it. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. You see, understanding that if we're going to be a servant to the Most High God, then serve with a pure heart, Amen. with a good conscience. With a good... Listen, don't serve, then go home and complain about it. And then you wonder when your kids leave high school why they don't go back to church. Don't come to church and say, oh, Pastor, oh, praise the Lord, and go home and just chew the pastor or the leadership up for, for lunch. And you wonder why your kids don't return back to church. Well, I'm telling you, I'm stepping on somebody's toes right now. We must understand that we must follow the example of Christ. If we want our kids to follow our example, we should follow our father's example. Don't shout me down. Just tell me, Pastor, that was good preaching right there. Amen. I didn't hear a lot of amens there. You got my back? Here's the next thing. Talking about following the examples of Christ. We receive great benefits of God, and one of the great benefits of God is because he gives us this truth that we have. This truth that we have will set us free. Now, I don't know about you, but I want freedom in my life. I, I remember the day that I received the truth that Christ gave me. I remember the freedom that I received. Because, see, here, here's, here's the problem. We can receive the freedom of God through salvation. And can I tell you something? If we're not careful, we stop right there. We stop right there. Well, pastor, isn't salvation one of the most? Well, yes, indeed. If you get salvation, you know, praise God, you're going to heaven. But can I tell you something? There's more than that. You know, God is wanting us to have a freedom of truth. Because, see, here, here's a freedom of truth. You ready? 
Judy, come here a second. She's like, oh. Here's a freedom of truth. You ready for this? I'm going to pick on Kevin. I'm going to pick on you for a second. <laughs> and, and I'm going to say this with all sincerity in my heart. A freedom of truth is, is this. There's not a doubt in my mind when I fly out of this country and I go clear across the world that she's not going to be faithful. None. She has never given me any reason to ever make me believe that, that she wouldn't be. And guess what? The same goes for her where I do go. Now, why did you say it that way? Because there's freedom in that. You see, there's freedom in that. There's freedom knowing that I can do what God called me to do, and she's okay. See, I will tell you that, that when, I, when I came to pastor this church, the guy who took my job today is making $30,000 a month. And some of you think, oh, my God, what are you, you crazy? A lot of people thought I was. But can I tell you something? She never once said, are you crazy? You see, there's freedom in that. There's freedom knowing that whatever. Listen, my wife knows I can't sing, but if I called her in a sincere way and said, listen, we're going to get matching T-shirts and a bus and hit the road, she'd go, I'm driving. No, I'd laugh first. She'd laugh first. Yeah. <laughs> now, I'm saying these things because I'm trying to get you to see the freedom that we have in a relationship. Now, let me just say this to you. That same freedom you have in a relationship with your husband and wife is the same freedom you should have with the father. Because, see, his truth will set you free. Understanding, listen, when he says, I forgive you, then you need to forgive yourself. Right. Come on. Right. You see, we have a problem forgiving ourselves. Come on now. Come on now. Who are you talking to? Me? Me? When pastor, listen, when, when, when God called me to pastor his church, bro, I thought, God, you missed it. <laughs> are you kidding me? God, I can't even, I can't pronounce half those words. He said, I don't care. If I wanted to call somebody to pronounce all those words, I'd call Charles Stanley. Come on, Come on, somebody. Let me tell you something. Can I tell you there's freedom in that? Because those who's been here, Mark and Trish and those who's known me for a long time, man, it was a, it was a, it was a process that I walked through during those times. Because, man, listen, it was hard for me. I, I mean, I'll just be honest. I mean, I grew up in a home that, that man, my mom was still say, laid in the tundra outside. <laughs> you know? Said everything backwards. And, and, and deep down inside, the enemy was trying to play a number on me and saying, you know what, I, 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 you can't pass for that church. You can't even talk right. Until finally one day I read the scripture where Moses said, who made your mouth? Because Moses was like, get Aaron. I can't, can't talk. God's going, who made your mouth? See, let me get you to understand something. There's freedom in that. Freedom in, in the truth that when God said it, that settles it with us. Amen. Understanding with God's word, it, listen, God's word is real, folks. Amen. It's real and it's alive. And if you, if you can stand here today and pretend like you're walking in freedom and you leave here and you're not, Amen. then you're lying to yourself. Amen. Because, see, you need to walk in the freedom that God has given us. Amen. Can I tell you, every day I find a new freedom. Every day I get free from something else. Every day I find out something else that God's going, you, you, you've been in bondage over that. Yeah. Let that go, boy. Yeah. Let that go. Yeah. Yeah. See, I was in bondage of things. Look, God Almighty, I was in bondage. I'm embarrassed to even say this. I was in bondage when, when my, my son came home and got his first tattoo. Come on, because I had all these preachers going, man, that's just rebellion. That's all this and everything else. And I said, he's my son, and I'm not giving him up. But you know what? You got people that say, oh, man, they're just this and that and this and that and this. And you know what? You listen to that garbage. You buy into that garbage. And so they're saying, I look past those and I look at the heart. There's something. Listen, you can't get no ink to the heart. There's, ink, there's God's ink there, man. Come on, somebody. Why are you saying that, Pastor? Because I'm trying to get you to be set free here today. There are so many people that are so bound up and they're not set free. So they, because they're not set free, they cannot serve. I can't serve. Because, see, servants know who they are. Amen. To be a servant, you got to know who you are. Because, see, 
If you don't know who you are, you try to be something you're not. Amen. Instead of saying, God, I know who you made me. I know who you... Because, see, if I try to serve in a way that I'm not, then I'm not doing anybody any good, especially myself. Yeah. Folks, I don't know about you, but this is good preaching today, Pastor. Amen. I might even get saved before this is over. Amen. <laughs> Just kidding. I, those who don't know me, I'm saved. Amen. <laughs> 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 Some of you say, well, man, boy, it'd be good that church had a pastor that was saved, amen. <laughs> Let me hit on a couple quick things here. Time is gone. Some of the benefits of God, with one of the benefits of God, we're always, 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 always on the increase. Always on the increase, increase with influence. Let me just read a couple of scriptures. Isaiah talks about it in twenty nine nineteen. It says, the humble also shall increase their joy in the Lord. Now, a good word of humble is a meek, a servant there. When we humble ourselves before the Lord, listen, we find joy in that. And, and we find when we humble ourselves, we're always on the increase with God. Amen? One of the places of increase in, 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 in uh, influence goes back to the same chapter in Matthew 5 when he talked about the Beatitudes. Right after he preaches the Beatitudes, he calls us something. He says, you are the salt. You are the light. Now, he didn't say you might be. He didn't even say maybe. He said you are. You're the salt and you're the light. Now, if you know anything about salt and light, that's influence. Amen? Now, salt will influence food, right? Salt will influence the whole body. You cut your finger and put salt in it, it influences the whole body. Light will influence you. Light will influence you to, to, to all kind of levels. Understanding, he says, you are influence. He's calling his influence is what he's doing. And understanding that we need to walk in influence. Here's the next thing. Serving means we can trust. You know, when you serve something, you trust something. If you don't, if you don't trust it, you can't serve it. Hello? Let me, let me just stop for a second and ask a simple question. Do you really trust the Word? Do you really trust what God says? Because if you trust what God says, then you will serve what He says to do. If you trust that God said it and, and He knows what He's saying, then, then you know what? There's a freedom in that. You've got to trust. Trust and obey. There's no other way. Come on, somebody. But to trust and obey, that's an old time song, amen? amen? We have to trust that he will never leave us or forsake us. We have to trust that he says, I, I've been young and now I'm old, yet I've never seen the righteous forsaken or just in this begging bread. That's trust. We have to trust that God said it. Listen, going to a new level today as a servant is trusting that God has your best interest at heart. Amen. Trusting that God knows what he's doing. Trusting that God, he, he, he's got your back. Trusting that, that no matter where you go or what you do, he'll never leave you. Yeah. Trusting that God knows what he's doing. Yeah. You know, I, I don't even like this thing when you, you see people have these, these signs on their car, you know, God is my co-pilot. Brother, rip that off your car. You know, I don't want him to be my co-pilot. Get the wheel. Come on, man. I want to be like Underwood. You know, Jesus, take the wheel. Amen? Take that wheel. Why? Because we want God to pilot our lives. I want to trust God in everything that I do. Listen, I have to trust God. I have to come to a place in my life where, God, I, I have to trust you about everything. Yeah. Look, my dad lives three and a half hours away from me. And those who know me know how much I love my dad. I love my dad and my mom very, very much. Yeah. Love them. I mean, they were in this church for years. One of the best greeters I ever had was my dad. My dad, I built him a home next door to me. I spent every day I was in his house. I love my dad. I have to trust that what they're doing over there, they're taking care of him. Because if I didn't trust that, then, then I wouldn't have a peace of mind. I have to trust. I have to trust that, that my sister and all the ones that are taking care of my dad over there, they know what they're doing and he's okay. I have to trust that. You see, we have to do the same thing with trusting that God knows what he's doing for us in our life. And here's the last thing is simply this talking about the benefits of being a servant. One of the greatest benefits that we get as being a servant is simply this. We get to serve. We get to serve. It's not we have to. We get to. You see, understanding there's a difference between have to. Have to means that you, you, you're, you're a, a, a slave. A bond servant is one who gives up and says, you know what, I don't have to, I want to. I get to. Understanding there's a difference. Because, see, Joshua said it. Joshua said, for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. 
See, he understood. Understanding that, that you know, we get to serve the Lord. Amen. We get to be. Listen, when we accept Christ in our life, we become kids of the Most High God. Amen. We get to be the head, not the tail. Amen. We get to be above and not beneath. Amen. We get to do these things in the things of God. Amen? 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 You want to say something real quick? Stand up. Right. You know, and to look at it that way, that he didn't become a mess, and, you know, you get these benefits back from serving the Lord that I wasn't getting from him. Right. You know, I wasn't getting this appreciation for these things, which I wasn't looking for. I was, right. It was for myself, you know, but to realize that, and you can't, you can, I couldn't serve two gods at once. Right. And, and, and I mean, oh, that's good. That's good. Amen. Thank you so much. Give her a hand. Amen. We can't serve man and God. We, we can't serve. You know, I'll tell you, freedom for me was when I read the scripture about you can't serve God and mamma. Because as a pastor, I'm very analytical. And, and even to the point where I, I always try to figure all these things out. And I, and I used to say this quite often. When somebody says, well, this is what we need to do or we need to do this. And I would always say, well, we can't afford to do that. And, and now, please don't, don't, don't think that I'm foolish in those areas because I'm not. But I tell you where I'm at now is I quit asking money for permission. Just pause out there for a second. I quit asking Mama for permission. Because, see, where I'm at now is, God, if you want us to do it, then you're going to supply it. God, I'm not going to say I can't do it because I don't, it's not. God, if, if you're speaking that, then you're going to supply it. Now, I'm not foolish. I don't just do foolish things. I don't go out there and just blame everything on, on you know, being foolish about those things. God wants us to, to walk and keep good godly counsel and wisdom. But I, I quit saying that because now I'm at a place in my life where I'm like, God, if this is what you want us to do, then you're going to have to supply that. Come on now. Over to the point where I just like, Daddy, what you going to do about that? Come on now. Understanding that, that we get to serve him. It's a, it's a pleasure to serve the king of kings. It's an honor to say, God, I want to, to be in good company of, of the examples of Christ. What a great example for that to be for us. In our life. God I want more of you today than ever before. Father I thank you so much. God I know this time is gone. and God there are times when. Even I leave and I go home. And I think about something I could have said. But God this morning I pray that everything that was said. Was said with a deep understanding. And, and, and received. With a great revelation. God if there's someone here today that. That don't know you. Let them come to know you. God if there's someone here today. That don't know how to be a servant. Don't know who they are. God let them find themselves in you. Let them know who they are in Christ. Let them receive all that you intend for them. God maybe there's someone here today that. Maybe it's just so intimidated. Maybe it just feels like they're just because of their past. Or unworthy to do anything for the kingdom of God. God I come against that stinking lie. I break down that lie. God, you called. God, you, you, don't, you don't just call the equip. God, you equip the call. God, I thank you that you're calling us for such a time as this. God, I thank you that you're setting aside things for us to, to do and to serve. 
Now, God, today, I just pray, heads bowed, eyes closed. Just give me one moment. We're fixing to finish up here. If you're here today, and maybe something that was said, maybe one of these points that I made, and I can go back and I can elaborate all of them, but I don't want to. I want you just to just think about it for a second. Maybe something that was said today really spoke to your heart, really ministered to your heart. And it's an area that you're going, Pastor, that's an area that I need prayer in. No one looking around, not going to embarrass you, call you out. Just want to pray for you. Something that was said today in one of these areas of benefits or whatever really spoke to you. And you say, Pastor, can you pray for me in that area of my life? Where are we at? Just simply raise your hand and put it back down. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Anyone else? Hands all over. Thank you, Jesus. Anyone else? Thank you, Father. Anyone else? Let's be honest before God. Anyone else? I know there's someone else. Anyone else? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. God, I thank you right now that we have a privilege of serving you. You are our King, our Lord, our Master. You are everything. And Father, it's an honor to serve you. Now, Father, hands popped up all over this place. God, I want to serve you today by coming in agreement with them that whatever they stand in need of, God, you're God that provides all those things. Blessings be upon them. God, use them in a mighty way. God, we thank you right now for touching them. We thank you for equipping them. We thank you for whatever they stand in need of, you're going to provide. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Maybe you're here today and you say, Pastor, I realize that I'm not even saved. I'm not even a believer. I'm not even a Christian. Or maybe you're here today and you say, Pastor, I realize that there was a time in my life I was serving the Lord, but I'm just backslidden. Right there between you and God, this is the time to get that right. You pray from the heart. Say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Jesus, I repent. And Jesus, I want you to come into my life today. Jesus, I'm yours, you're mine. Maybe you prayed that prayer for the first time, or maybe it's a prayer of rededication. I'm not going to embarrass you. If that's you this morning, right where you at, just slip up your hand and put it back down. I just want to pray for you. Thank you, Jesus. Hands all over. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you for touching souls and changing lives. God, I thank you that you allow us to be on the increase with you. Blessings be upon your word today. Let it go forth and multiply. We honor you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. If you received that word, let's give God a hand this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me do something real quick before we take up this. The, let's dedicate that baby this morning. Can we do that? Just give us a moment. We're going to dedicate this baby today. Then we're going to take up the offering. So don't slip out on us. Hang out with us just for a second. We love dedicating babies around here. Amen. We're actually going to do both of them today. Amen. Miss Aurora and Cassius. Jesus. Thank you, Father. Come up here. Come on, Fred. Let's stand around this family right here as we just pray over them. Amen. Father, we thank you so much for this couple. What a beautiful family. God, I thank you right now that these children's lives, God, will always be on the increase with the gospel. God, I pray wisdom on their parents. Give them wisdom to raise them, to teach them, to guide them, and be great examples. Blessings be upon this home, their friends, their fellowship. Blessings in their life today as we dedicate these babies to you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Let's stand to our feet as we get ready to take our tithes and offering today. Let me encourage you. Maybe you hadn't given in a while toward the tripping over hope. Trying to pay off the land so we can build this building. Maybe you want to pray about committing so much for the next several months. Whatever God's laying on your heart to do, I just encourage you to do so. I also encourage you to, to be a tither and a giver. Be obedient in your giving and your, your, your promises to God. 
Thank you so much for giving because we're able to support missions and do all the things we do. Blessings be upon you. Father, we thank you that we can give. God, you're such an amazing God. You give more than we can ever imagine. Your abundance is bigger than us. Blessings on the gift and the giver. Blessings on the tithes and the offerings. Blessings on all these things in Jesus' name.